was looking at the science, I found a 2013 consumer report that discussed how 69% of raw pork samples were contaminated with a number of different bacteria and parasites, particularly very high in Arsenia enterocolitica, which is a really, really, uh, a really bad parasite to get. It causes a lot of GI stress, so gastrointestinal stress, diarrhea. I mean, a lot of reports of people die all over the world with this sort of infection. And so it's very, very hazardous. Also on top of that, you know, pigs are known to carry tapeworms, which believe it or not, very, very common. And, and once we get tapeworms in our system, they're very hard to eliminate. I work with a lot of clients using parasite protocols in order to help eliminate these things, but it's very challenging in order to do that. Parasites will, will reduce your immune system and put chronic stress on your body. A lot of these people with parasite infections, they don't sleep well at night because parasites stimulate stress hormones at night. Stress hormones go up, the individual doesn't sleep well. In fact, that's one of the signs that you may have a parasite is, you, you know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night, all of a sudden you're wired, right? And you just can't fall asleep. You struggle to fall asleep no matter how hard you try. That is actually a sign, right? That a, a well-versed clinician will say, hmm, possibly there could be a parasite playing a role here. And uh, pork is one of the biggest carriers of parasites. So, you know, we look at the science, it just shows that we've got all these parasites in the animal products. And now we can cook and we can try to really, really cook it at a high temperature to kill off as many of these parasites as possible. And that's definitely effective to a degree. But some of the parasites are actually so virulent, they're so resistant that they can survive even high heat. So, um, so an animal like pork, again, not a whole lot of vital nutrients that we can't get, really no vital nutrients that we can't get from other animals like lamb, grass-fed beef, um, consuming bison or, or wild game, wild-caught fish. We get much more, a much greater nutrient value out of those animals, right, and consuming those than we would out of pork. And then with pork, we're also taking in a high risk for parasites and then other environmental chemicals and toxins as well. well. When we barbecue or we cook at a really, really high temperature, we actually cause a number of carcinogenic chemicals, particularly things like heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And these uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PACHs, that's produced when we're, in a sense, when we're smoking the meat, right? So the smoke aspect produces these PACHs which uh, are known carcinogens, right? So they really increase our risk of developing cancer. And then heterocyclic amines, so whenever you've got blackened spots on your meat, that's a buildup of heterocyclic amines, which are basically proteins that have been broken down in a certain fashion, and they become really potent free radicals that cause a lot of oxidative stress and tissue damage in our body. So clearly we don't want that. And then also the, the carbohydrate in the muscle meat gets burned up and it produces something called acrylamide, which is another carcinogen. So you got three of the most potent carcinogens that you are actually producing when you barbecue something. So I'm not a big fan of barbecuing at a really high temperature, any sort of meat. Um, and so when we try to do that with pork, we're obviously gonna cause problems.